our society is changing. It is much more multicultural than ever before. The age profile is changing as people live longer. Today, there is a much higher percentage of people aged over 65 in our population. The majority of older people in Ireland live at home or with their family. Increasing numbers of older people live in a residential care setting. Residential care can be operated by public, private or voluntary services. It is everybody's right to lead a life free of abuse, regardless of their ethnic or cultural background, religion, political persuasion, gender, sexual orientation, disability or age. Preventing abuse is everyone's responsibility. All older people have a right to be supported to live a meaningful life connected to their family and friends. All of us who have regular contact with older people have an essential role to play in protecting and promoting this right as well as a good quality of life for older people. The training DVD you are about to watch was filmed using professional actors. No actual patients or staff were filmed in the making of the DVD. The DVD does not set out to portray best practice in relation to personal care, manual handling or general care giving. The scenes portrayed are based on national and international research on elder abuse. Some scenes can be quite shocking and disturbing. If you feel you may be distressed by the content of this training DVD, please speak with your line manager. Abuse can happen to an older person in their own home, in a daycare centre, in a residential care facility or nursing home, in a hospital, in sheltered accommodation or in boarding out. In all of these settings, harm and abuse can be caused by family members, neighbours, paid healthcare workers or volunteers. Indeed, elder abuse can be caused by anyone. This training programme has been designed to assist all staff working in residential care settings to recognise elder abuse and poor care practices. It will also inform you of the correct actions to take if you discover or suspect elder abuse. All of us working in residential care settings, such as nursing homes and public long-stay facilities, have a duty to provide the best quality of care for older people while respecting the older person's civil rights, privacy and dignity. All staff in a residential care facility, care assistants, nurses, doctors, social workers, therapists and administrative staff should be aware that they can be complicit in elder abuse and poor care practices. This DVD and training manual are designed so that they can be used together as part of a training programme. The problem of elder abuse was highlighted in the 2002 report Protecting Our Future. International research has shown that increasing numbers of older people experience regular abuse in some form. Come on, slow coach. It's time to go to the dining room for dinner. Ouch, that hurts. In addition to protecting our future, this training DVD aims to support you in meeting the criteria set out under Section 8, the protection standard of the National Quality Standards for Residential Care Settings for Older People in Ireland, as published by HICWA. I just want to visit my friends. You wouldn't have any idea where to find them. Anyway, you have no friends, they're all dead. Come on back. The report Protecting Our Future defines elder abuse as a single or repeated act or lack of appropriate action occurring within any relationship where there is an expectation of trust which causes harm or distress to an older person 
or violates their human or civil rights. In order to understand and identify abuse, all of us need to observe and think broadly Just check in your so we do not overlook or accept situations of abuse as normal. That's not my dress. No. Come on, put this on now. Can everyone come in? It is common for an older person to be experiencing more than one type of abuse at the same time. An act of abuse to an older person may be against the law and may be considered a crime. Abuse is a violation of an individual's human and civil rights by another person. Eat the food, Anne. Okay, stop pushing it away. In a residential care setting, an older person may be abused by a partner, spouse, child, relative or friend, a visitor to the residential facility, a health, social care worker or other paid worker, clinical staff, therapists or administrative staff, or by a volunteer worker. Protecting Our Future recognises six types of abuse. They are physical abuse, psychological abuse, financial abuse, sexual abuse, neglect and acts of omission and discrimination. <coughs> Most elder abuse occurs at home. However, a significant proportion of elder abuse occurs in a residential care setting out of sight of the general public. You're not listening, you're not paying attention. Helen, you fell again yesterday. Now keep this in front of you. But I'd like to get around the place. It's for your own good. Caring for older people is a rewarding but sometimes challenging experience. The majority of incidents of abuse occurring in a residential setting are not deliberate, but are a result of poor work practices, lack of proper training, thoughtlessness, ignorance or time pressure. Mary, I want to go to the toilet. In a minute, love. Don't worry, you're wearing a pad. Abuse can be a result of inappropriate care plans for individual patients or neglect. If we witness poor care practices or do not challenge questionable attitudes towards older people, we contribute towards condoning abuse. Only in a minority of cases is elder abuse a deliberate act. It is important we realise that the signs of abuse described in the following sections of the programme are only indicators that abuse may be happening. Behaviour and injuries of the type we describe may be present for other reasons. Physical abuse is the injury or mistreatment of an older person through the use of physical force or the threat of physical force. Physical abuse can be deliberate or accidental. You have me. Come on now. Before you finish with me. I'll hurry up. It includes over-medication or the withholding of medication, force-feeding and the inappropriate use of restraints. Physical abuse may be inflicted directly with a fist or a foot or with a weapon such as a belt or a hairbrush or by burning with a cigarette. Rough handling during caregiving is also a form of physical abuse. The abuser may conceal injuries to prevent the abuse being discovered. Did you have a fall? No. It's so nasty. Who did it? It is important that those who are helping older people with personal care take notice of any bruising or other marks in unusual places. Incidents of physical abuse. Many of the routine tasks that carers need to perform can result in a situation where physical abuse can happen. Some residents may react aggressively to being bathed or washed. Staff should anticipate these situations and seek help and have an appropriate care plan in place. 
There are also dry hygiene products available, which can be used as an alternative to washing or bathing. Joe, stop it. Do you hear me? Stop with the drama. We're just having a shower. It's not the end of the world. On occasion, a resident may behave aggressively towards a staff member by striking them, attempting to strike them, or by being verbally abusive. It is important that staff react to this in a sympathetic way and try to calm the older person. Inappropriate use of restraints by carers can be a form of physical abuse. I hate being tied up like this. Using a recliner chair when a resident does not really need to be restrained in this way. It's not right. Also inappropriate use of lap bells to restrain a resident in a chair or a bed could be seen as physical abuse. The use of bandages as a restraint is not acceptable. Many patients are not at risk of falling out of bed, so using bed rails to restrain them at night may not be appropriate. Refer to your organization's restraint policy for further information. Joe, stay in the bed. If I will have to strap you, I will strap you. Failure by carers to use a hoist to assist a resident from their bed or a chair and using rough handling to lift them is a form of physical abuse. Carers and nursing staff should be properly trained in the correct procedures before using a hoist to lift a resident. Carers must also be aware that being lifted by a hoist can be a frightening experience for an older person. Some residents may resist or resent being assisted to use the toilet. I'm okay, I'm okay. Or staff may use a commode rather than taking them to the toilet. Giving residents their medication can cause problems for staff. Residents should not be coerced into taking medication. I don't want it. If you don't take it, you will end up to hospital. I don't want it. I don't want it. Take it. Take it. That's it. Guidelines should be followed when crushing or disguising medication. The older person's family and their GP or medical officer should be informed when an older person is refusing to take their medication. But a concentration may be of nothing else to do all day but sit here and you still manage to spill your yoghurt on yourself. God, you're great crack. Hello, can anyone hear me? Psychological abuse or emotional Hello? abuse is one of the most commonly reported forms of elder what abuse. Are you doing, Liam? It can be any verbal or non-verbal act that inflicts emotional pain, mental anguish or distress on the older person. This includes making jokes about or teasing the residents because they are confused or because of their physical appearance. Why are you taking off your shoes and socks? Are you stupid? Are you thick? Are you all thick? Deliberately excluding and ignoring older people is also a form of psychological abuse. You are a bunch of lazy, messy slobs. Psychological abuse can take the form of threatening, bullying, isolating, shouting, blaming, or blackmailing. Look at you, it's pathetic. Deliberately ignoring an older person or depriving them of basic needs, pleasures, or activities is also psychological abuse. I want to go to the toilet. Doris. Now, Liam, come with me to your room. Uh, you're not is, watching the TV with the others because you're a this, troublemaker and a nuisance. But this, but this is my favourite programme. I just, I Psychological know. abuse can be difficult to recognise, as there are no physical scars for anyone to see. Can I have a cup of tea, please? Psychological abuse is almost always accompanied by another form of abuse, such as physical abuse. 
signs of psychological abuse. The victim may feel or appear depressed, withdrawn, frightened, agitated, anxious or aggressive. The older person feels or seems isolated. Unexpected or unexplained changes in the older person's behaviour. Financial abuse includes theft, fraud, forgery and embezzlement. On occasion, people in a position of power may invent stories to coax money from patients. To my problems, Financial abuse is one of the most commonly reported forms of abuse against older people. It's been very difficult since John left me and the children. It's been one thing after the other and now I'm behind on my ESP bill again. I'm happy to help. How much do you need for the ESP bill? About 100 euros. Don't tell anyone. Financial abuse does not have to mean large sums of money. A small amount of money taken regularly from an older person can add up to a large sum over a period of time. Thanks for buying the raffle tickets, Anne. It was a good cause. But I gave you 50 euro. No, love. It was only a 20. You're confused. Abusers often justify financial abuse by thinking that they deserve the money because they are a carer, they have earned it, that it is their rightful inheritance, or by thinking that the older person does not need it. But you don't need legal forms for that. Daddy, I told you, the law has changed now. You have to sign this form. And then you have to sign the one for the pension because we have to have it paid into your bank account, OK? It's nothing to worry about. Just do it, OK? Are you sure? Yeah, I never had Dad, to sign anything for that before. There's nothing to worry about. Just do it. Who's going to pay for your funeral? Mary, you're Betty's principal care. Yes, John? She's complaining that money is missing from her handbag. No, she must have misplaced it. She's left it in her room somewhere. She's very forgetful. Signs of financial abuse. Lack of money for basics. Newspapers, sweets, cigarettes, hairdresser. Despite an adequate income. The older person complaining of money or possessions going missing. Reluctance on the part of family, friends, or the person controlling funds to pay for bills, clothes, treatments, or medical expenses. A person's inability to explain what is happening to their income. Unexplained credit card use or withdrawals. Disappearance of bank statements, pension books, or other documents. Daddy, so you just need to sign it now, so here we go, just sign it there. Staff in a residential care setting have a responsibility to protect those in their care from financial abuse. Just there. Procedures in relation to residents' finances and receipt of gifts from residents should be followed by all staff. In addition, staff should make sure that they follow the correct procedures when reporting suspected financial abuse and ensure that visitors conduct financial transactions with residents in a proper manner. Thanks, John. Is there a problem? I think so. Deirdre Murphy, uh, Dominic O'Brien's daughter, is getting Dominic to fill a bunch of forms. Should I report this? Yes, you should report it. I'll actually come with you. It's actually about to head up to the line manager myself. If you are unsure or concerned about any matter concerning a resident's financial affairs, you should report this to your line manager. Sexual abuse. Sexual abuse is forcing an older person to take part in any sexual activity without their consent. Kissing, forced nudity, fondling, touching particularly the genitals, making the older person fondle someone else's genitals. That's terrible. You know you, you've always been my favourite aunt. Have I? Yes. 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 Well, I told you I was your favourite nephew. Oh, you are, you are. You are yeah. Sexual abuse is a criminal act which may be reported to the Gardaí. Sexual assault, rape, sodomy, sexual harassment all come under the category of sexual abuse. No. <gasps> No. No. Forcing an older person to observe sexual acts, showing them pornographic material, 
or spying on them in the bathroom or bedroom are all considered sexual abuse. Even telling dirty stories if the older person finds them offensive. Yeah, we're lovely now. Yes. Yeah. Signs of sexual abuse. Pain, itching or injury in the anal, genital or abdominal area. Torn, stained or bloody underclothing. Bite marks or bruises on breasts, neck or face. Venereal disease or recurring bouts of cystitis. Unexplained problems with catheters. Difficulty sitting or walking due to discomfort in the genital area. The older person's behavior may change. They may appear depressed, withdrawn from normal activities, or appear agitated, frightened, or anxious. No, 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 no. Residents will sometimes make sexual advances towards staff or other residents. An older person suffering from dementia may lose their sexual inhibitions and behave in ways that are distressing to both staff and other residents. Staff and management should acknowledge these incidents and manage them in line with your protection policy. And then you can talk to her, but there will be no, no, no touching, okay? Abuse by neglect and acts of omission. Here's the dinner, Molly. Eat it up. Neglect is failing to provide for the basic necessities and physical needs of the older person. In a residential care setting, this can include neglect through lack of food and water. Don't you want your dinner, Molly? I'm not hungry. Very well, suit yourself. Appropriate clothing, hygiene and lack of mental stimulation or lack of assistance to move around, either in bed or moving around the unit. It's been going downhill more and more. It's a mystery. I mean, Neglect can also mean the denial or delay of medical care. Would you recommend a change to medication or her care plan? Look, at her age, dear, there's nothing to be done. It's a long list. Let's keep moving. I want to go to the toilet. Let me look after me. It can also include lack of access to the toilet or inadequate changing of pads or disposable pants, which can lead to bed sores. Are you sure? Not changing bed clothes after a resident has wet the bed. Just allowing the wet bed linen to dry or sprinkling it with talcum powder is neglect. Signs of neglect deterioration in appearance or personal hygiene, unhygienic or unsafe environment, rashes, sores, ulcers, unexplained weight loss and inadequate food or drink, inadequate medical care, lack of social stimulation. The presence of pressure sores may also be a sign of abuse through neglect. Claire, um, could you give me a hand to read this? I can't seem to find my glasses anywhere. Not now, Dominic, I'm busy. Abuse by acts of omission. Abuse by acts of omission is a lack of basic emotional support and respect. This can involve not attending to the older person, ignoring moans, calls for help, or call bells. Failure to provide necessary psychological care such as therapy or medication for depression, isolation of the older person, leaving them alone or restrictions on phone calls or visitors, lack of assistance in doing interesting activities such as watching preferred TV programs or intellectual activities. Let's watch football. You'll like it. Some overlap exists between abuse by neglect and abuse by acts of omission. Regardless, they are both forms of elder abuse. Alors, euh, voilà, 
Abuse by discrimination. Excluding the older person by speaking in a language they don't understand is a form of discrimination. Shouting at an older person who has poor communication skills is also a form of discrimination. I hate putting that guy F from to bed. But to be honest, I don't really like working with blacks in general. Older people, like anyone else, can also experience abuse by discrimination which focuses on their ethnic or cultural background, religion, political persuasion, gender or sexual orientation, disability or age. Staff can exhibit ageist attitudes in the way that they approach the care of older people. Ageist practices and attitudes can occur in working relationships with older people and can be characterised by lack of consultation, patronising behaviour and insensitive responses to the needs and wishes of an older person. We all have a duty to recognise older people as individuals with different life histories, needs and expectations. Hey Let's say a decade of the rosary. The first story is Mystery of the Resurrection. It is appropriate to cater to individuals' religious and spiritual needs. However, staff must avoid imposing their own cultural, religious or political beliefs onto the older person who may not share those beliefs. All residents should be individually consulted about their beliefs and cultural preferences. Grace the Lord is with you, blessed are you. We'll say please and thank you, Joe. Any chance of that now? Nice. Can I get some? Can I have some, please? The nature of this abuse often means that older victims of discrimination find it difficult to come forward, as they have no way of knowing whether they will be listened to or supported in a sensitive way. Come on, Joe, come on. Stay in the bed for a couple of hours, Joe. Your breakfast will be at 8 o'clock. Institutional abuse. Are you finished yet, Molly? No, no. Okay, hurry up. Close the door. The types of abuse perpetrated in residential care settings are those we have described in the programme. But there may be more at issue than the behaviour of a particular individual because of the organisational nature of the delivery of care. Did you shave, Joe? Well, yes or no? Yeah, OK. Will you check their pads if they are dry and I will do the next door. OK. <clears throat> Abuse may occur because of poor facilities, inappropriate work practices, inadequate systems, poor record keeping, training, monitoring or because of poor financial control around residents' personal allowances. Sometimes abuse occurs because staff are under pressure to perform a task or tasks in a given time. Oh, that's Joe in room six. I'll go oh, see Oh, relax, love. Finish your coffee. Joe is always ringing. He's just looking for attention. He's fine. But in my training course, we were always taught to respond to goals immediately. Mm. Isn't that good practice? Very uh, is something you have to adapt. We can't be at their beck and call the whole time. And another thing, why do we get the clients up and dressed at 6.30 in the morning? Most of them don't like it. If it works, just don't question it. You'll have to forget a lot of that theory. What works is best. I don't know, it just seems like we should do more or something. You need to get up now. 
Sometimes those who care for older people are not suited to the requirements of the job and they allow themselves to vent their impatience, frustration and anger on the older person whom they are supposed to be protecting and nurturing. Can we not just bring them in separately? Why do we have to bring them in all together? <laughs> Because that's the way we do it here, love, okay? In a residential care setting, staff may be prone to elder abuse because of poor work practices, lack of training, inadequate support and supervision, challenging working conditions, insufficient staffing, staff burnout. Sometimes neglect is not intentional. It may be the lack of adequate training about how to care for the older person. Hurry now, Lee. Claire, I want to go Hang on, I need to answer a call now. Factors that may lead to abuse. Abuse occurs for many reasons and the causes that lead people to abuse are not fully understood. However, the following risk factors have been identified. Individuals who are unsuitable for a caring role have to do something. Get up. Do not like working with older people. TV or something. It goes like this every Have a lack of understanding of the needs of older people. Get up, get up are experiencing personal stress, such as relationship difficulties or alcohol or drug problems. Joe! Joe! What are you doing? A range of other factors may increase the likelihood of abuse happening. For example, providing care for those with complex needs, such as when the older person has a form of dementia which may affect their memory or ability to reason and causes unpredictable behaviour. Has communication problems as a result of hearing, visual or speech difficulties. Has behaviour problems or major changes in personality which result in repetitive behaviour, wandering or aggression demands or needs more care than the carer can give. Often abuse happens simply because there is no impediment to stop it. Get up, go, go and do something. Hey, you're lying all day. Get up, do something. Get up, get up. Treating older people with dignity and respect. In a residential care setting, it is important that staff manage the care of older people with dignity and respect. Treating older people with dignity and respect can help avoid instances of abuse. While banter and chat between residents and staff is a good thing, staff should not become overly familiar and use pet names inappropriately. Teasing residents about their physical appearance, speech impediments or behaviour is unacceptable. Carers and staff should not normally have to wear gloves when caring for residents. Many older male residents will be unused to being cared for by females and may find it very distressing to be washed by a woman. Similarly, many older females will be very uncomfortable with a male attending them in the shower or taking them to the toilet. The sensitivities and preferences of older people should be respected. Older people who are terminally ill should be cared for with the utmost respect and account should be taken of their beliefs. You know, the angels are waiting for you. Staff should be aware that residents will have different or no religious beliefs and they should be treated with respect to their wishes. I'll say another one tonight. Staff should not fall into the trap of treating older people as children. You'll be fine. Oh, poor little baby. Demonstrations of comfort and support should be appropriate and acceptable to that individual. 
Staff should not patronise or think that all older people need assistance when eating or need to wear a bib. Many older residents look forward to meal times and should be allowed to enjoy it. They should not be rushed or fed if they can manage for themselves. Let me enjoy it. Hurry up, will you? Staff should encourage residents to talk about their interests and family and carers should show an interest in the older person's life experience. Build upon them, my darling. Right. Managing disclosure. If an older person begins to tell you that they are being abused, there are some key things to remember. It's very distressing. I, I, I so can't sorry. begin to tell you what it's like. I find like, that they're so rough with you. Do listen attentively and take notice of body language. Take it seriously, even if it is not making much sense to you at present. Try not to show you are shocked. Explain about confidentiality. Clarify the victim's version of the story, but do not ask leading questions. Reassure them that they have done the right thing in talking to you. Report it to your line manager. Remember that you are there as a representative of your organization, as well as a person with a duty of care. Remember, it is not your responsibility to handle the situation on your own. <laughs> Don't take it lightly or make a joke about it. Dismiss or disbelieve what you have been told. Change the subject because you feel uncomfortable with it. Make assumptions. Don't say things like, this can't be true. I don't believe it. That is ridiculous. What to do if you witness or suspect abuse? To teach them how to behave. Yeah. Isn't that what it is? We can talk here and you can tell me what's been upsetting you. Yes, indeed. Well, it's been going on for some time now. Take appropriate steps to ensure the safety of the older person. Follow your organization's protection policy. Don't fit me. You know, Do not discuss the subject with or challenge the abuser. Nearly frog marching. Discuss the situation with your line manager or facility manager at the earliest opportunity. And you watch other people. Find out what the victim wants to do, but explain to them that you will need to inform your line manager. See the training manual that accompanies this DVD for further information. Somebody sympathetic, you know. I'm really glad it's you just, talked to me. It's the cold hardness, I think, with them. But you don't get that feeling of the care. What um, would you like me to do? I'd like it to stop. OK. Definitely. I think I've had enough of it. Yeah. Yeah. It seems Claire has been doing this for some time. It's really shocking. Do remember that acts of physical, sexual and financial abuse which violate laws against assault, rape, theft and other offences are criminal acts that must be reported to the Gardaí who can investigate the matter further. If you believe that an older person is at risk from immediate harm, the Gardaí need to be informed immediately. Older people deserve to be treated with the respect that their lives and achievements as people warrant. For those reasons, it is crucial that all of us who work with older people maintain vigilance on the issue of abuse and be aware that we have a duty of care. If you witness elder abuse, doing nothing is not an option.